Hello friends, we're back. We're gonna dodge into Canada real fast and see if we can catch some views of a Joan Snyder show. Special shout out to our viewers in Milwaukee, Rome, and New Delhi. We're gonna start out looking at this piece. Excuse me. It's in the front office. Now let's go back and see the the main gallery. Well, I've come in before and done a an in brief video of the show, but uh, Joan is one of our long-time favorites, so uh, I wanted to come back. I think maybe we'll splice this together with the Joyce Kozlov show, which would be appropriate. Got a couple of female artists that have been painting in New York for probably, I shouldn't say it, 50 years, something like that, 45. This is titled Autobiography 2023 Oil Acrylic Burlap Paper Mache Flower Stems Leaves Ink and Paper on Linen. Yes, yeah, so you can go back in the files. I think I've probably got at least uh, three or four other shows of Joan's work over the years. I think. Over at Betty Cunningham and Chelsea. It's one of the first ones we got. This is titled My August 2023 Oil Acrylic Paper Mache Straw, blah, 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 on canvas. Well, I think that, um, as I was saying, Joan has been painting in New York for a long time and, uh, I like to keep track of how people's careers arc and the changes and the developments and things. And uh, I think Joan just keeps getting better and better. I uh, have read some recent reviews, I think in Two Coats of Pain and a couple of other places where they talk about Joan's kind of personal iconic palette. This is titled Only in April 2023. And uh, well, she does have a kind of a unique palette, a lot of magentas, maroons, mauves, and other, other shades that begin with M. Some rose. I think the other thing I like is that um, talk about Joan using mixed medium, and uh, she really does. I'm I'm a big fan of the contrast of uh, textural things, and uh, well, I think you'd be hard pressed to find another artist that is 
able to use as many interesting, lovely, strange, uh, textural things as Joan is. Soul Catcher. 54 by 72. Yeah, I like the way that she's um, she's kind of coating and glazing the, the linen, but then she uh, builds up all this other stuff using the burlap, the straw, chunks of straight oil paint, paper mache. I mean, some of this looks like bird's nests. And, uh, well, I'm sure Sigmund Freud would have a lot of insights into the shapes of the various forms here. It's titled Pond Dreaming 2022 with the full list of ingredients. Grounding 2023 oil on acrylic paper mache rosebuds by blah 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 mud. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what brand of mud she uses. Oh, something else. I've got some applique embroidery she's added in there. Again, this is 54 by 72. See, and I like something like that right there. Very simple, very formalistic, contrasted against some rugged, juicy, expressionistic areas. Okay, let's go in the project room. Okay, this is from the sky. This is 24 by 24. Okay, this is why we like the project room. We can put some of the more intimately scaled pieces here. I think another thing that's nice is that sometimes people start to work on a smaller scale. They get very precious and the work tends to get a little overworked. Overworked without being too overworked, and uh, Jones kept these fresh. This is titled Grounding, 2022, 23. 24 by 24. Magenta and Bronze, 2023. Okay, I think this is a good example of what I was talking about. Of, Jones palette Somehow I uh, Look at this and I get a little nostalgic for spring And it makes you think of looking at a uh, a bouquet of withered roses or something she does have the rosebuds in there. Okay, I'm wondering if she's mixing stuff in her oil paint as well. Yeah, the layers of glaze are Pretty tasty. This 
This is titled Sub Rosa 2 2023. Okay, it's I like the name, but I'm kind of <laughs> is that the name of a skin disease as well? I don't know. Um Okay, so I like we've got the two contrasting panels. We've got the right hand panel, which is kind of broken down into the grids with the splashy, looks like buds, a lot of chunky paint slathered on there. And then the left side is a little sparser. And oh, we've got some uh, like little figure studies in there. That's nice. I think I uh, was down in Brooklyn oh, a year or two ago at a little gallery in Red Hook and uh, I believe Joan had an exhibition with her daughter and they had a lot of paint, paintings on paper, drawings on paper and prints. Okay, here's our last piece, Trio. 2023 oil acrylic paper mache rosebud straw burlap on linen in three parts. Well, like the previous diptych, this is a triptych, and each one of the panels seems to have a kind of a particular theme. So we've got our kind of formalist stripes, we've got our chunky, it's almost like post impressionist blow up section, a lot of paint knifed on there, and then we've got our like a black egg nest with the uh, extremely nicely layered lacquered central par portion. The way that she's uh, added these splotches of paint onto the this collar of straw. James Com reporting on Joan Snyder. Come closer here at Canada on Lisbonard Street. called collateral damage. Okay, you can pause your computer here and read the wall text. Well, I've got about 30 minutes before closing time, so we are going to eschew the general leisurely installation views and get cracking. Okay, well, we'll uh, start out right here. It's titled Ukraine. And, uh, well, they talk about in the press release how Joyce has been doing these map paintings since the early 90s. And she talks about this latest series as of a memorial to the cultural and civic things that are being destroyed with a lot of these current conflicts. Okay, these are all acrylic and they're all 60 by 60 inches. Xinjiang, Tibet. 2022-23 acrylic on canvas, 60 by 60. Um, well, so I've been watching Joyce since the 
late 70s, and even before then I was aware of her from reading some of the art magazines. And, uh, well, Joyce was a very influential part of the pattern decorative movement. I'll read a little bit from the press release. Kozlov's latest series of paintings, Collateral Damage, focuses on the target, targeted destruction of life and cultural heritage in ongoing conflicts. Painting maps of countries currently at war, Kozlov covers the most fraught over areas with images from textiles and architectural ornament. Works represented a less tangible losses of communal memory, the destruction of history, and cultural caused by the killing of individuals. These rich, richly colorful and complex paintings do not evoke the destruction of specific historic monuments, museums, and other institutions, but the material culture of everyday life and the traditions that are at risk of ratification. Kozlov comments, I hope to make connections that will communicate with others. Collateral damage is about current conflicts many of which are proxy wars over borders, resources, ethnic and religious differences, and regional and global power. People, families, communities, and their collective histories are the losers. I want to memorialize them as they disappear. This is Sudan. Twenty twenty two, twenty three. Well, as I was saying, I got to know Joyce when she was one of the major influences, forces in the pattern decorative thing, and it also says in the feminist art movement. And uh, gosh, as I kept watching her career, she kept expanding out and doing other things. She did a whole series of ceramic pieces. This is titled Cashmere, 2023 acrylic, 60 by 60. So she's doing these fantastic ceramic pieces and they involved mosaics and a lot of glazing. I think at least a couple of them are in public spaces. I think maybe in the subways here in New York and some other places. And I've seen some of her other mapping paintings that are also nice. This is Tigre, Ethiopia, Eritrea, 2023. One of the interesting things about this is that because Joyce is such a, an expert in the various decorative products that come out of these countries, these areas, she's able to, I assume, kind of use those as analogous forms to fill in her mapping areas. So I've got this piece that looks kind of like kinte cloth there. It's in Ethiopia. Some other decorative things. also says here that uh, Joyce was one of the original members of Heresy's Journal, which was a feminist culture magazine back in the early 70s, very influential. Also, Joyce is married to Max Kosloff, Kosloff along with Jerry Saltz. I think he was one of the only art critics in the last, gosh, I don't know, 40, 50 years that has won a Pulitzer Prize for art criticism. Sahela, 2023. This is nice, it's more of a darker palette. 
and uh, gosh, Joyce has got some sparkly stuff going on there. I wonder if that's just uh, rabbit skin blue Senegal. While we were over at the uh, David Dio show earlier, Iran, Afghanistan. So I was just talking about David Diao's paintings and the text. And I have to say one of the things that I like about Joyce's work is I like the, uh, the hand letter text. Also, uh, this section here that looks like Islamic mosaics. This definitely recalls Joyce's ceramic work. Very beautiful, a lot of brilliant turquoise. Persian Gulf. Okay, so that's nice. We've got the uh, kind of the reverse where the land masses are a dark green and the, the water is, is kind of yellow with the wave patterns in there. <coughs> Kuwait, the Caspian Sea. Yes, Joyce is quite a uh, sensual colorist. The Caucasus. I think the other thing I was thinking is that these are all five by five foot squares, which is about the same size as the uh, final series of Ad Reinhardt's black paintings, dark paintings. I think he decided that the five foot square was just the perfect size for his work. I think one of the other things that I was attracted to, not only Joyce, but the whole pattern decorative thing was that they, they wanted to elevate the, the reception of what was considered domestic products, weaving, uh, textiles, uh, decorating home appliances and things. And uh, I think they did a really good job of getting people to think about that because a lot of that was considered women's work for some reason. Yeah. Horn of Africa, 2023. Okay, so I'm wondering, I guess this might be raw on prime canvas that she's painting on maybe and a lot of the acrylics are basically kind of stained in there so she gets a very brilliant transparent color with them okay this has got a little more formalistic geometric aspect to it somalia I also like the way that uh, Joyce kind of lays in her basic design and she starts to fill in with patterns. And then again, she's also got some kind of swoopy gestural things that she throws in there, kind of a abstract expressionist flourish. I was gonna say the other thing is that uh, God, when you look at all the, these maps and realize that there are ongoing conflicts in all of these places, that uh, we're pretty lucky to live in a place where they're not in open uh, civil wars or clan battles or whatever.
Sharia, Rajaja, Israel, Gaza. Okay, this is very timely. We got uh, Golan Heights, West Bank. I think you could probably take all the political stuff out, the tech stuff out, and you'd still end up with just beautiful kind of abstract puzzle part paintings of, you know, beautiful color, interesting compositions. Okay, we'll finish up in the project room. Okay, so these are some of the older pieces back here. Rocking the Cradle, 2003. Cradle with acrylic. Okay, and so we've got a nice little map in the bottom of this. Baghdad, oh, I love the arrows. I hate to say it, but this is a cradle, but it could double as a coffin, I guess. It kind of has that feeling. Yes, Joyce can be very articulate when she wants to be. These are very beautifully and precisely painted. This is titled Spheres of Influence. Acrylic on canvas 96 by 192 inches. Okay, this is a very ambitious piece. Joyce couldn't restrain herself. She's got the little disco tape stars in there in the fluorescence. Well, I'm a fan of mapping myself. And uh, God, one of the reasons I wanted to make this, make it over to this show was because I've always seen some of Joyce's maps, but it's great to see a bunch of them together. Okay, so this is also 2001, so these are 22, 23 years old. It's a very impressive piece. It's titled Now and Later, Acrylic on Canvas. This is 2007. Each one is 48 inches in diameter. Okay, well, I've been looking at a lot of hermetic diagrams online and some of the classic Renaissance maps, and uh, all of this relates to that. Although I have to say this is more of a understated palette. Oh, maybe I shouldn't mention this. Oh, I'll go ahead. <laughs> One of the other things I like about Joyce in her kind of feminist subversion is that it has been rumored. <laughs> I think I asked her once and I got <laughs> shut down pretty fast, but there have been rumors that Joyce might be involved with the, the Gorilla Girls. I shouldn't say that too loud, but uh, let's say 
radical feminist group that's been doing demonstrations and protesting the exclusion of female artists for the last 40 or 50 years and doing it in a very provocative and funny way and I'm not saying she is but I thought I'd mention that. So there's been James Com reporting on Joyce Kozloff collateral damage here at DC Moore. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. And you can subscribe. And we would like to thank you too for unterminating the James Com report. So if you're one of the people that responded and told them to free, free the calm, thank you. And we also want to say, <laughs>